There's nothing wrong with getting out and enjoying a day of rail fanning. To me, it's hard to beat that feeling of excitement when you first see those lights off in the distance. However, as rail fans, it's so incredibly important to practice patience, safety, and respect. After all, you're not an employee of the railroad, and more often than not, the markers and rulings for what's trespassing and what's not can often be misconstrued by rail fans. Therefore, I always find it important to just assume you are on railroad property at any time while rail fanning. Treat this as a privilege. Treat this as though you are a guest in their business. That's at least the way I see rail fanning. Sometimes the rail fan community can get a very bad reputation by railroad employees of being troublemakers, disrespectful, or just simply downright weird. But I for one have always just treated railroad crews I come across with respect, give them their room, and in the case of the crew I hung out with on April 27, 2024, as they waited their inbound coal train to take over, I talked to the lead conductor about fishing, hunting, and other common interests. They were interested in hearing more about my YouTube channel, and in the end, they gave me a friendly wave as they headed north towards Indiana. Hey. However, all it takes is just a couple of bad eggs in the rail fan community to ruin it for all the others. On April 21st, 2024, a 17-year-old Nebraska-based YouTuber under the channel name Capital City Rail Productions uploaded a video titled Loaded BNSF Arbor Collides and Derails in Bennett, Nebraska. Most insane video I've ever taken. And as of July 26, 2024, the video has 405,000 views. If you don't know, this is my second YouTube channel. My primary YouTube channel is Danny B Talks, which has mainly been a YouTube channel where I have posted a lot about research videos on the sport of NASCAR. Now, not every video performs insanely well there, but I can certainly understand it's such a great feeling when a video performs well. It's true that it truly is a drug every time a video does well. It releases a sort of dopamine effect when a video does well. And for many small creators, that dopamine is fueled even more the desire to get paid to be a YouTuber. However, there's a certainly not even fine line between making a good video and committing an actual crime. As it would turn out in Capital City Rail Productions video, a loaded BNSF coal train switched over from the main line into a siding which was holding a single coal car, with the train colliding into the rolling stock, with the teenager heard screaming, Oh my God, are they okay? Fast forward to Friday, July 26, 2024, and I come across on my X feed from Drama Alert a headline that reads, YouTuber derails train just to get insane footage. The headline was shocking, and seeing such a high profile creator such as Keemstar, the creator of Drama Alert, speaking about the rail fan YouTube community was even more shocking to see happening. So I had to look up the full story to understand more. And while a few other networks have picked up the story, the one gaining most traction comes from the New York Post. New York Post reporter Megan Pollan gets full credit for this article, and from her reporting, according to the information she picked up from Fox, Nebraska, the teenager was the first to report the derailment, and he even approached an investigator at the scene to show him the footage. Well, fast forward to Wednesday, July 24th, the young man has been charged after the investigators conducted a search warrant to take his cell phone, a 4K camera that he used to film the derailment, and it was also discovered through surveillance footage from the area of the derailment that showed a 1996 Buick Park Avenue traveling in the area before the teen could be seen walking on the south side of the tracks toward the switch shortly before the derailment. So the real question that remains is, how the heck did a 17-year-old YouTuber even switch the tracks in the first place to cause such a disastrous derailment? Well, to better answer that, we need to take a look at how railroad switches operate in the first place. Now, in a power-operated switch, the motor and linkage apparatus is connected to a CTC signal system, which allows the dispatchers to line tracks for specific routes. In the case of the switches we see in Nashville, trains traveling between tracks 1 and 2 can be moved to travel up and down the mainline sub and the Henderson sub.
The switch machine, as it is commonly referred to as, can move the switch points to either normal or reverse position and lock in until an electric signal is relayed to unlock and reverse back the other way. However, a switch machine can also be unlocked and controlled manually in hand throw mode should it be needed in case of a signal system failure, communication failure, mechanical malfunctions, or power outages. Power switches are usually left locked in motor mode, and there are latches with padlock rings to connect padlocks for every position the manual lever can be rested in to prevent tampering. So with that being said, what about those padlocks? Why did they not do their job to prevent tampering? Well, according to the article from the New York Post, the investigators reported that the padlocks had actually been removed, either with a key or someone cutting them off, and therefore somebody had definitely tampered with them which now do we know it is alleged to be the 17 year old suspect who did that. However, this isn't the first case that we've seen of railroad YouTubers causing trouble along the railroad. Infamous YouTube rail fan Sebastian DeYoung had posted numerous railroad safety violations across his YouTube account, including trespassing and entering unmanned locomotives, opening railroad electrical boxes used for a rail heater, and of course, wouldn't you know it, illegally switching the tracks, resulting in the signal turning from green to yellow repeatedly. That's how it works. So guys, this isn't a great look as a whole for the rail fan community. It's truly not. But please know, if this is your first time seeing a video from me, I just want you to know, we're not all like that. I want to encourage everyone watching this video to enjoy the railroad, but treat it with respect. As I said, being in a position to watch trains, you are acting as a guest of the railroad at that time. Please, treat this with a lot of respect to them guys. We don't want to keep seeing incidents like this happen. Now for the sake of fair journalism on the matter, it is extremely important to specify that as of right now, we do not know the name and identity of this 17 year old YouTuber, nor will it be released incidents like this involving a minor will never release the name. It is also very important to say that no admission of guilt has been indicated here either. He has simply just been charged and now they have the opportunity to fight this in the court of law. And of course it has to be stressed that the young man is innocent until proven guilty. However, it is certainly not a good look for himself and his entire future should he be found guilty. It's not good for the future of his YouTube channel and career. And quite frankly, it's just not a good look for the rail fan community as a whole either, as it just helps paint an even worse picture of all of us, unfortunately. The young man is currently looking at two counts of criminal mischief causing damage worth more than $5,000, both of which are felonies, and penalties associated with this could include a $15,000 fine and up to seven years in prison on each count for which they are charged. Now, many online have said this number seems very low for something like this, to which I agree because this incident could have been much worse, but we'll touch on that in just a moment. According to 1011 Now in Nebraska, a motion has also been filed to move the case from juvenile court to county court, which could possibly see stronger sentencing. So as of right now, because they are a minor, this appears to be their biggest strength of their case. Now, as I mentioned earlier, this whole incident could have been much worse. For one, the train that was derailed was not traveling at a greater than normal speed, and the conductor did make an attempt to stop, which obviously helped slow the train, but I believe that due to the weight of the coal loads, this helped impact not be as bad for them, as only the lone coal car, two locomotives, and the first five cars of the contest were derailed in this instance. And even then, nothing was tipped over. Pieces just came off the track. This really could have been much worse, and thankfully, no injuries were reported. However, while they got off lucky in this case, what if this had been a chemical train? What if this was something carrying much more valuable cargo? What if it was an empty train that resulted in an impact large enough to throw several cars and create a huge mess? There are so many unknowns here, but what's even more dangerous and what's really troubling me is that if a teenage YouTuber can derail a train like this for just simply trying to make a viral YouTube video, what's stopping a group of terrorists or somebody who's just looking to cause harm in the United States from coming out and causing mass chaos across the country by derailing trains. Now, I'm not sitting here trying to be a fear monger or cause mass panic, but it is indeed a legit concern that the American rail systems 
need to take better precautions and preparations for. It's already happened now, and sadly, it could happen again, unfortunately. Now, I hope we don't see a rise in cases like this, because trust me, I want nothing but safety for the world and the hobby of rail fanning, but the truth is that, well, there's a reason that why you can track planes but not trains, aside from late reports on the heritage unit apps of specially painted locomotives. Think of all the dangerous chemicals that many of America's freight trains are carrying every day. Think of the unfortunate tragedy of the Norfolk Southern derailment in East Palestine, Ohio, and everything that accompanied that disaster. If somebody knew exactly where to find those dangerous trains, it would be a top target by groups who are wishing to cause harm in this world. Now that's all the time we have for today. Remember, stay safe and be respectful while rail fanning. It is indeed a privilege to be able to film trains and railroad activity. It is very easily a privilege that can be revoked if you choose to act like a fool. We have to be better as a whole. And when you see bad apples in the rail fanning community, I believe it is important to call that out. I'm Danny B, and I thank you for watching today's video. If you enjoyed it, please be sure to leave a like to let the YouTube algorithm know that you enjoyed it and want more people to see it. And oh, by the way, I've got a lot more rail fanning videos right here on my channel, and I've got a backlog of more videos to edit. So, if you want to see more, subscribe to Danny B Trains and never miss another new rail fanning adventure with Danny B. And until next time, I hope you have a great day. Bye, guys.